Hello class, welcome to Math 2020, section 9.4 on pyramids and cones. Here we're going to go through the handout and show you some examples. What we're going to start with are pyramids. So, what is a pyramid? Well, with the, any vocabulary word and figure in geometry, we take the general category of what they are, and we kind of give some specific characteristics of what the figure is to distinguish it from other figures that might be in that category. And the general category that we have is a 3D geometric figure. Okay, so a pyramid is a 3D geometric figure. With one polygon base. And so we will make that an adjective and say polygonal base. And lateral faces. Which are triangles. And converge to an apex. Say that converge to an apex. Now, an apex is like a vertex at the top. Okay. Some examples of pyramids are a square pyramid, triangular pyramid, and hexagonal pyramid. So we'll go ahead and draw those now. The names of these pyramids are from the base polygon name. Okay. So here's some examples. So I'm going to draw a square pyramid. That's a square pyramid. The next one will be like a triangular pyramid. So the base could be a triangle. And or the base could be something as complex as like a hexagon. <clears throat> Okay, can you on those are examples of pyramids. Next we're going to find the volume of a pyramid. Okay. So the volume of the pyramid <clears throat> um we need to uh, let's see the so here's a pyramid. Go ahead and start with a little bit of a drawing of one. Okay, so we have a pyramid here, and we need to find we have uh, things we can measure on the pyramid. Okay, so this I'm just gonna make this a different color. Make this green. This distance right here is a distance from the base to the top at a right angle. Okay, this is the height, the height of the pyramid. And this part right here 
is the base of the pyramid. Okay. And so to find out where the volume formula comes from, we're going to look at our pyramid inside a corresponding rectangular prism. Okay. Okay, here's our rectangular prism. Okay, and inside I'm going to draw our pyramid green, which is our base. Notice it has the same base as the prism. Here's our height, same height as the prism. So hopefully you can see that okay. The, comp the formula for the volume is from the prism, so the corresponding prism. So we're going to do volume of prism, this is a help refresher, is length times width times height, or equals the area of the base times height. Now, the volume of the pyramid is going to be inside the prism, and what notice that the <clears throat> that the pyramid takes up less space than the prism, and so the volume of the pyramid will be a fraction of the volume of the prism. What fraction? Well, what we do in class normally is we take the pyramid, we fill it with water, and pour it into the prism, and see how many times you can do that. Okay, you can obviously do it once, but maybe two or three times. Well, it turns out that you can do three, exactly three pyramids into a prism of the same base and height. Okay, so that means the volume of the pyramid is going to be one-third um, of the area of the base times the height. Okay, now I'm using the general terms of area of base because the base could be um, a hexagon or it could be a triangle. Okay, we can do one third length times width times height is if the base is <clears throat> going to be a rectangle or square. Okay, so we have our um, formula. I'll go ahead and box that. Make sure that you you when you use the formula, you remember the one third, and that with pyramids you use one third because it's less space. With prisms, you use the full thing. Let's use this as an example. Modeling clay. Suppose you're, to, you're able to create a replica of the Great Pyramid of Giza out of clay. The model would be a square pyramid with a height of 10 inches and a base length of 15 inches. How much clay do you need to make the model? Okay, so the pyramid's gonna be yellow because it's kind of yellowish. So here's our base length of 15 inches. Label that is in this right here. Fifteen inches. Okay, that's the one base edge, and then we're gonna do the other one coming off of here. Right there. Here's the one in the back. One in the back. Okay. And here's the height. Now the distance, the height is the distance from the bottom to the top, so this is 15 inches here. Oops. Now the bottom to the top is going to be this distance starting from the center all the way up to this high. Now this distance right here needs to be 10 inches, okay, so it's going to be shorter than the 15 inches. Okay. And so when we do do that, we're going to connect them up with our yellow marker. That's still on the back. There's one on that side. There's one on that side. There's one on that side. Okay. So that's our pyramid. 
model. And I'm going to go ahead and label the height. And 10 inches. Now we're going to do a volume calculation. The volume is equal to area of base. Oh, not with the pyramid, though. We need to make sure that we remember what, again? Well, one-third, right? Because one-third is not like a prism. So one-third times the area of the base times the height. And in our case, we have one-third. The area of the base is going to be 15 inches times 15 inches. And the height is going to be 10 inches. Okay. So one third, let's go ahead and simplify this. One third of 15, this will simplify to five inches times 15 inches times 10 inches. Now five times 15 is 75 inches squared times 10 inches. And that's going to be 750 inches cubed for our volume. Okay, ten. next video is the surface area of a pyramid. Okay. So we're going to think about that in this just one video here. Now the surface area of a pyramid, let's go ahead and think about what we need to do. Surface area means finding the area of all the surfaces. And so let's take a look at this pyramid. And in our pyramid example, we have a rectangular pyramid. Okay, and so Here's a generic rectangular pyramid. And what kind of surfaces do we have here? I'm going to, let's go ahead and try and make them all different colors. So we have a green, green surfaces right here. I'm going to call the left, the right and the left surfaces because the orientation of the pyramid will be about like this one in our example. Okay. Green corresponds to left and right. Since this is a um, this, since this is a pyramid um, that's rectangular, okay, I, this base length right here is going to be different than this base length right here. Okay? Different base lengths. So we're going to have a left and right surfaces are the same, okay, but the front and the back. So we'll do front and back surfaces. They're also going to be the same. yellow front and back okay front and back now those are also going to be the same okay. and with red we're going to show the base now the base is sometimes used but sometimes it's not okay okay and in our example it actually won't be used let's go ahead and read it now oh so actually these are, yeah, so we're finding these surfaces and the green ones are triangles. The yellow ones are also triangles. Mm, we actually have two triangles for the green one. And the yellow one, we also have two triangles, okay. The red one is a base. The red base is a rectangle. Okay. And we know the area formulas for these. Triangles are base times one half base times height, and the rectangles are just like times width. Okay. Now in our example, we have a painting a pyramid. Suppose you constructed a rectangular model for pyramid for a mini golf course and wanted to paint it. The model is 10 feet tall and a base of length of 12 or in a base of 12 by 14 feet. What is the surface area without the base? So you know how much paint to buy. Okay. So we're calculating the surface area so we can buy paint and go ahead and draw this um, this rectangle here. Rectangular base pyramid I mean. So here's our pyramid. We're going to label it now with our height of 10 feet. 
So I'm going to draw that with the green. Here's my height. Distance from the bottom to the top, perpendicular. Okay, that's my height, 10 feet. Now one base is 12 feet and one's 14, so it looks like this one's the longer base here, so let's call this one 14, this base right here at the bottom. Um, I'm going to label that one as 14 feet right here. Okay, that one's 14 and this one will be 12 feet. Um, now that's all the information that they give us. We need to kind of gather the rest of, the, of it from um, mathematics. And so we're going to find the the area of the base we don't need to worry about. But in, but if we did, um, I'll go ahead and use red again. Area of base would be 12 feet. Well, let's go ahead and back up a little bit. B length times width is equal to 12 feet. That's 14 feet. And that's going to equal, I'll do it on my calculator. One hundred and sixty eight feet squared. Okay. But since we're not gonna worry about the base for this one, we're gonna kinda just line it off here. We need to find the area of all the triangles. Now, since this is 12 feet here, this is 14 feet there, we have uh, two triangles. I'm going to call it the left and right ones again, and then a front and back ones. So we'll do those um, left and right ones now in green. I'm not going to go ahead and, I'm not going to fill in because we need to see more. I'm going to outline them in green here. Okay. And this is this one back here too. Okay, so those green ones are the left and right ones. So I'm going to shade that in a little bit darker. Okay. The area of these triangles is one half base times height. Now the base of the triangle itself, is not the base of the pyramid, is this distance here. We know that that one's 12 feet. But the height we don't know. Okay. And so what we need to do is we need to find the height because this is actually the distance of the height. I'm going to use um, purple for this one. That's the height of my 12 foot triangle, 12 foot base triangle right here. Okay. But that distance, I do not know what it is because they haven't given it to us. And so we use the Pythagorean theorem to help. Okay, we take a look at a right triangle. I'm gonna form the rest of this right triangle with my purple pen. Okay. And so this triangle is right. Where the length I need for the height is the hypotenuse. Okay. I do know that the height, which is one of the legs, is 10 feet, but this, so this is gonna be 10 feet, but this distance I don't know readily, okay. But I do know that the whole distance all the way across is 14 feet. See this distance right here, 14 feet. Okay. So this one must be half of that, which that'll be seven feet. So I do know that. So h is going to equal to, or h squared is going to equal to um, 7 feet squared plus 10 feet squared. Okay. In the Pythagorean theorem, h squared is going to then equal to 49 feet squared plus 100 feet squared. And that gives us 
e squared is equal to 149 feet squared. Now h is going to then be approximately equal to, let me put this on the same line here, whatever the square root of 149 is. So let's go over our calculator. And we get 12.2. Goes on forever, of course, but that's really close to what it actually is. So that height there is 12.2 feet. So what we're doing is we're going to <clears throat> uh, find, the, find the area of the base times height. Now I have my 12.2 feet. And that's going to equal 1 half of 12 is 6. 6 times 12.2 is 7.3, 73.2. So that's the area of the, and um, that's just one of them, right? Since there's two triangles that are like that, we'll multiply that by two. 146.5 feet. Okay, now it's 146.5 because of the rounding. Okay, and now I have both the green left and right triangles. Let's go ahead and do the next ones, yellow. Now the yellow ones, let yellow front and back. Okay, so yellow front and back ones I'm going to outline in yellow. Just do a heavy outline. Just in the middle here. Here's the back one. These are the ones that we're looking for now. Okay. Yellow front and back. Let me get this back one in the back here more. Not in the way of other things here. There you go. Let me just try that. Okay. So we have the, so there's two of them. Uh, the area is going to be equal to one half base times height. Okay. One half times the base. We know the base is 14 feet. The height is what we're going to look for now. And we're going to do something similar where we construct it in a right triangle. And I'm going to make it, um, Let's make it light blue. No, yeah. Not too light, so let's go a darker color. Let's make it orange. Just orange. Okay. So our triangle here will be orange, then we need to find the height of this is I'm going to write draw down in the height now. Okay, so this is the height of the triangle. The distance from the bottom to the top. And I don't know what that distance is, but I do know that similarly we have a right triangle where the height is 10 feet. This part right here is going to be uh, 6 feet. Okay, because it is half of this 12 feet right here. Okay. So our height squared is equal to 6 feet quantity squared plus 10 feet quantity squared, using the Pythagorean theorem again. Okay. So height squared is going to equal 36 feet squared plus 100 feet squared. And when I add those together, I get uh, height squared is equal to 49, uh, no, 136 feet squared. which is about equal to, oops, let's try this again. It's the root of 136. Okay. 
and I get 11.7. Eight. Okay. So that means that this distance here and that height of that triangle is 11.7 feet. Okay. And so now we have our the information we need for our area formula. This again is half 14 feet times 11.7 feet, okay. which is uh, approximately equal to using our calculator. Eighty-one point six feet squared. Okay. And so now we're going to um, take our calculation of eighty-one point six feet squared. And we're going to multiply that by two. there's two of those triangles, front and back. And when we do that, we get that that is equal to 163.3. Okay. Now, we're not going to use the base when we calculate the total uh, surface area, but we do have the area of all four of those triangles. And so the surface area itself is equal to 146.5 feet squared plus 163.3 feet squared. Okay, when you do those together, you get 309.8 feet squared. And that's our answer. Okay, so we're going to do what is a cone. Okay. A cone is um, a 3D geometric figure with One non polygonal base and the lateral surface that converges to an apex. point, in other words. So here are some examples of cones. We have our general cone, which has a base that could be a squiggle or something. Just gonna remove all those. Okay, so you guys get the idea. That's your general cone. Okay, so all of these points along the edge here all converge to an apex. Let me do that as a different color. Maybe green would help. Okay, they all converge up to there. You connect them up to an apex. Okay, what you have is the lateral surface. Okay, that's our general cone. The next cone is probably one that you'll recognize, right? Circular cone. Okay, the right circular cone is the usual one that we always see. Okay, right circular cone. Then the last one, you guys remember, is the oblique. 
an oblique circular cone. Okay, an oblique one means that it's at a at a point it comes to a point outside um, tilted. Okay, tilted point, oblique circular cone. So here's some examples of cones. The volume of a cone um, is derived from the volume of a cylinder with the same base and height. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a cylinder here. Back that up just a tad. There we go. All right. And inside this cylinder, I'll draw a cone. So we can compare it. It's exactly the same size and height and diameter and radius. Okay, so there's our radius. This is our height. As typical. Now, we know that the volume of a cylinder is area of base times height. In other words, it's equal to pi r squared times h. The volume of a cone is only a fraction of that, okay? Because notice that the cone is smaller. Oops. Notice that the cone is smaller. It's, it goes up to an, a point here, okay? Now it's only a fraction of that, but what fraction? Well, it's actually the same as the pyramid fraction, one third. If you pour three cones. In, of water inside this cylinder, you'll fill up the cylinder. So it's one third of the area base times the height, which is one third of pi r squared h. Okay, if you like formulas, if you like descriptions, those are how that works. Okay, box this one, but where's this one? Let's go ahead and use our volume formula in the example. One of the most famous examples that, that students like to use is ice cream cones. Suppose you wanted to know how much ice cream would fit into your ice cream cone. You measure the cone and find out that it was two inches in diameter and four inches in height. What is the volume? Okay. So we're gonna draw our ice cream cone upside down. Okay, there we go. So our two inches is in diameter. So that's the whole thing across here. Looks like it's going to be a very skinny ice cream cone, but that's okay. The height right here is four inches. Okay. So we have um, the volume is equal to area of base times height. Oh, sorry, one third of it, right? Don't forget your one third. This is not a cylinder, it's a cone. So we have to do one third times area of base times height. In this case, it's going to be one third pi r squared h, because we have a right circular cone, which is going to be equal to one third times pi. We'll use 3.14 for pi. Now r is going to be one inch, right? Because it's half of the two. The height is four inches. Now when we do this, we're going to get um, one third of 3.14. So let's do that in our calculator. So the 3.14 divided by three. And then we're gonna multiply that by the one squared, which is actually just one. And then we'll multiply that by four, which is the height. Okay. And our answer is four, approximately equal to, approximate answer, 4.19 inches cubed, okay? Coming from that inch to squared in that inches. Okay, so that's how the volume of our ice cream cone. Now, we're going to talk about the surface area cone. Now, surface area cone is extra credit. Because we're not gonna talk really about the derivation of the formula. If you wanna 
And we'll do an activity in Math 3070 if you're a math specialist, um, where it talks about the, where we derive it. But um, the surface area formula is equal to pi times the radius times the slant height. Okay. Now the slant height of the cone is this one right here. So I'm going to outline that in red here. Slant height. So we have the regular height here. Okay, so that's height. And this one is called the slant height. So I'm going to erase this right here. Okay, so the regular height meets the the base at a right angle, but the slant height is whatever this distance is here along the edge here. That's the slant height. And so that's what the distance that we need. Okay. Surface area of a cone. Now, what what does this look like as a picture? Well, if you take a cone, okay, and you unravel it, you open it up, and it becomes a sector with a little circle on the base, which is the base circle, right? So if you really wanted to add on the base, you need to add on an extra pi r squared. Because this part right here, with the slant height, pi times r times slant height, is the area of the sector. The pi r squared is the area of the base circle. So sometimes you'll need it, sometimes you won't. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at our example. We're going to make a Santa hat. Suppose you want to make a Santa hat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that. We have a cone. Oops, let me do that. Okay. That Santa hat. And you have a little white puff ball on top. Santa hat. And it's, um, and you would like it to be 12 inches high. Okay, so my height is 12 inches. That's this distance here. And 13 inches for slant height. That's this distance here. Now, if you didn't know the slant height, you can use the Pythagorean theorem because you have 5 inches for a radius. Okay. You could do 12 squared and 5 squared equals the slant height squared. Okay. All right. Um, what is, how much material do you need? So we need the surface area. And we know the surface area is equal to pi times r times slant height. Now, we don't need the base because it's going to be a hat. So the bottom needs to be left open. Therefore, we're going to leave off base. Okay. Pi, we're going to estimate to be 3.14. The radius is 5 inches. The slant height is 13 inches. When we multiply those together on our calculator, we do 3.14 times 5 times 13. Okay. And our answer is 204.1 inches squared because it's an area. Okay. So make sure you have that much material for your Santa hat. All right, so that's our lesson. Uh, problems are posted. And they'll be similar to the example problems that we do here in this lesson. And so good luck and let me know if you have any questions.